Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will solve a couple of problems which I well, qualify as arithmetic problems, but because they are about numbers. Um, now, this lecture is part of the course called Math, and, uh, Math Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com. Uh, by the way, if you found this lecture somewhere else, like on YouTube, etc., um, obviously you're welcome to watch uh, whatever you want, uh, but the website actually gives you a little bit more, because together with every lecture on the website there is a detailed description of the same material, which basically is like a textbook. So you have both the lecture, visual kind of presentation, and textbook style presentation on the same page, basically. Um, the website is totally free, no advertisement, no strings attached, so you can use it as much as you can. Now, this course is uh, subsequent to a prerequisite course called Math for Teens uh, on the same website. And uh, I do suggest you basically to familiarize yourself with whatever is in that course before you are approaching all these math plus and problems. Well, primarily because all the problems are related to some theoretical material presented in the Math for Teens course, the prerequisite course. Also, there is a Physics for Teens course on the same website. There is a Relativity uh, for All um, kind of introduction to Special Relativity course. Um, well, use it at will. So, a couple of problems today. The first problem is the following. Uh, consider you have a prime number, P, which is greater than 24. And I'm dividing this prime number 4 by 24, which means it's represented as this, where R is a remainder. Now, what I would like to prove is that R is prime as well. So, P is prime. I divided this by 24 with a remainder, and I'm stating that remainder is supposed to be a prime number. Okay, now, as usually, before I proceed, uh, it makes sense for you to basically pause the video and try to solve this problem yourself. Now, the textual part, the notes for this lecture on the Unisor.com website, does not contain the solution, but it contains a hint. So maybe if you can think about this problem and you are in, you know, you, you don't have a good solution, take a look at the notes for this lecture. It gives you a hint, some kind of a beginning of logical um, uh, proof. Okay, now that might help you. It's definitely much more beneficial if you solve the problem yourself. Now, here is what I suggest as a solution. Well, let's think about this. Let's assume R is not prime, which means it's supposed to be represented as two different numbers. Both of them should be um, greater than one. But well, yeah, greater than one. OK, now. Um, Let's think about what kind of numbers that can be. Now, don't forget that uh, P is uh, supposed to be greater than 24, and R is supposed to be less than 24. So R is a number which is less than 24, represented as a product of something. Now, what are the numbers, the uh, obviously, the, 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 we need some kind of prime numbers um, into which uh, R is supposed to be represented. Well, since 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, none of these numbers can be 2 or 3. Because if this is 2 or 3, then P would not be a prime number because the 24 is divisible by 2 and 3. 
and r is divisible by 2 or 3. So p will not be the prime number. It will be divisible by 2 or 3. Okay, so it cannot be. So what's the next prime number? The next prime number is 5. Now, r is not supposed to be just 5, because 5 is a prime number and there is nothing to prove. We were trying to prove that r is a prime number. So it's supposed to be 5 times something. Well, and that something also should be not equal to one, or, uh, one of these, not equal to 2, not equal to 3, obviously not equal to 4, so the minimum will be 5. But 5 times 5, five times five is 25. R is supposed to be, it's a remainder, so it's supposed to be less than 24, right? R is supposed to be from 0 to 23, that's the remainder. So there is no number less than 24 that can be represented as a multiple of at least two fives or more, because 5 times 5 is already 25. So it's impossible to represent it as the product of two numbers because each one of those numbers is supposed to be at least 5. 2 and 3 cannot be, because it will be, and, and 4 as well, because 4 is also divisible by 2. So 2, 3, and 4 are not supposed to be among these R's. So it's 5, and that's why you cannot have a um, non-prime number as a remainder. OK, that's my first problem. Uh, I'd like to mention that the problems which I present here are not typical problems which um, you might be presented in, in, in school, because those problems are more related to just to check how well you know the theoretical material. These problems are supposed to force you to think about something which you don't know how to solve. I mean, it's not like somebody gives you the recipe and you have to follow the recipe and come up with a solution. No, there is no recipe here. You have to invent it. And that's the most important part, I think, in studying mathematics. It gives you some kind of a way where you can develop your logical um, abilities, your creativity, your analytical abilities. So that's the whole purpose, I think, of studying uh, mathematics. It doesn't have much utility nowadays i mean you might actually need to add numbers i mean that's as much as as much math as you might actually need but m more than that r really requires certain really good thinking and that's why i would like to present this course called math plus and problems for for you to develop this particular kind of non orthodox thinking okay next problem Next problem is, consider a number 10 to the power of n plus 18n minus 1. And it should be, I would like to prove that it's divisible by 27, regardless of n. Well, just let's check. If n is equal to 1, that's 28 minus 1 is 27. If n is equal to 2, it's 136 minus 1, so it's 135, which is 5 times 27. So for any n, this is just an example, but any n is supposed to be divisible by 27. Okay, and again, as usually, pause this uh, lecture and try to d d uh, try to prove it yourself. Okay, now, how can we prove it? Well, first of all, let me start from the easy thing. Divisible by 27 means it's a 3 to the power of 3, which means we have to divide it uh, by 3 two times. So, but I can immediately see that I can divide it by 9, which is two threes. Why? Because 10 to the power of n is 1 and n zeros, right? Minus 1 gives you 9, 9, 9, 9, and digits 9. Obviously, it's divisible by 9, 
it's nine times one 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 and digits and eighteen is two times nine times n. So this is divisible ten to the power of n minus one and eighteen divisible by nine. So divisible by nine I have three and three. What remains is that if I will divide it by 9, and what will be as a result, I will have this number plus 2n. I would like to prove that this is also divisible by 3. That would be my third times. So by 9, I have already divided by 9. I have remaining 2n from 18, and this number, which contains n units, um, that that's the second one. So the sum is supposed to be divisible by 3. How can I prove it? Okay, now um, it's a known fact that um, the number any number any number gives by division of uh, uh, division by 3 gives a remainder the same as sum of its digits um, it's a known fact but I'll just very briefly prove it so this number is supposed to be written as 10 to the power of k times a k plus 10 to the power of k minus 1 times a k minus 1 plus etc plus 10 to the power of 1 a1 plus a0, right? So if you have, for instance, 3571, it's uh, 10 to the power of 3, 3, plus 10 to the power of 2, 5, plus 10 to the power of 1, 7, plus 10 to the power of 0, which is 1 times 1. So 3, 5, 7, 1. This is a decimal representation, right? Okay, now, what can we do about this? It's equal to 10 to the power of k minus 1, a k plus 10 power of k minus 1, minus 1, a k minus 1, plus 10 to the power of 1 minus 1, a 1, uh, plus plus I will add back whatever I have subtracted here a k plus a k minus 1 plus etc plus a 1 and plus a 0 now these are divisible by 3 actually by 9 as well why? because 10 to the power of k it's 1 and k 0 minus 1 would be 9 uh, digits uh, k, k, nine, k, k times 9 digits repeated which is obviously divisible by 9 and by 3 so which means that the visibility of this and the visibility of, thi of this okay, this is number n number n gives exactly the same remainder by division uh, by 9 and by 3 as sum of its digits this is sum of its digits, right? So it's a digits, digital representa decimal representation with digits. So some of the digits must have exactly the same remainder as n if you divide it by uh, 3 or 9, because all these are divisible by 3 or 9. Okay? So their difference must be divisible by 9 as well, because this is equal to n minus some of its digits. So n and some of its digits must have exactly the same um, remainder if you divide it by 9 or by 3. Well, in, that, in our case, we need right now to prove that this is divisible by 3. All right, let's, see, let's think about this way. n is supposed to give exactly the same um, remainder dividing by 3. three times, so let's say, m, and some kind of a remainder, r. 
as sum of its digits. Okay. Now this. Well, this is a number, also a number, and it's supposed to give the same remainder, dividing it by three, as sum of its digits. But in this case, we know sum of its digits. Sum of its digits is n because it's uh, n times one repeated. Uh, repeated one after another. So sum of its digits is n. So if you divide this number by 3, you will have exactly the same remainder as number n. So 1, 1, blah, blah, blah is equal to 3 times, let's say, n, but remainder will be the same. Okay. Now if I will put 2 here, that would be 2m and 2r, right? It's 2n. So sum of this would be equal to 3 times whatever, 2m plus n plus 3r. And it's divisible by 3. So sum of these is divisible by 3. Now this is a very, I would say, delicate moment in logic. So first, you basically prove the theorem that the number, any number, by dividing it by 3 gives the same remainder as sum of its digits. And then this number has, in, in dividing it by 3, gives some kind of a remainder as the sum of its digits. Sum of its digits is n. Now this is just a number n, and we also know that number n is supposed to give the same remainder, remainder r. And now all you do is just the multiply it by 2 and add them together and you will get divisibility by 3. So that's the third tree. So 9 was divided before and now we have proven that this is divide, the result after you divide it by 9. This is the result of dividing by 9. You still can divide it by 3 and that's the 27. Okay, the last problem. Now let's assume that we have 100 different numbers. Now, the problem is, out of this set of 100 different numbers, different natural numbers, I can choose a subset, subset, subgroup, whatever, a few numbers, some of which is divisible by a hundred. This is supposed to be proven. So, again, we have to prove that out of any group of 100 numbers, I can choose a subgroup, uh, some of which is divisible by a hundred. Okay, now, obviously, you can pause and th pause the video and, and think about this process. Um, again, there are hints in the textual uh, part of this uh, lecture. So you go on the website and you will have uh, notes, and notes contain the hint. Okay, so here is how I suggest to solve it. Let's form partial sums. So SK is equal to sum of NI from 1 to K. So S1 is N1, S2 is N1 plus N2, S3 is N1 plus N2 plus N3, etc. Up to S hundreds, which is sum of all of these numbers. So Basically, SK represent a sum of certain numbers. Okay, now, there are two different cases to consider. Number one, there is one particular sum which is divisible by 100. Well, fine, that's exactly what we wanted to prove. 
So if there is such a sum, then whatever constitute its components is the subgroup sum of which gives the result which is divisible by 100. So in this case, everything is just trivial. So now assume that none of SK is divisible by 100. So none of SK is divisible by 100. Now this is where the real thing starts. Well, if it's not divisible by 100, it should give some kind of a remainder when you divide it by 100, right? Okay, so we have 100 different SKs, S1, S2, etc., S100. But how many remainders are available if you divide it by 100 um, and if it's not divisible by 100? Well, the remainder can be either 1 or 2 or 3 or 99. So there are only 99 different remainders um, if you divide it by 100, uh, if you divide it uh, by 100 number which is not divisible by 100. Divisible gives you 0, obviously. So if it's not divisible, it gives you 1, 2, 3, or 99. So there are 99 different remainders. Now, how many sums do we have? We have 100 sums. S1, S2, etc. It's 100. Now, there is a principle. If you have, uh, well, I think originally it was about rabbits. If you have 100 rabbits and 99 cages, you have to put at least two rabbits into some cage because there are no places to put 100. Only 99 places, but you have 100 rabbits. So if you, want, if you would like to put them into, into, into cages, then obviously at least two of them must go into the same cage, which means two different, at least two different um, sum, let's say SM and SN, should give exactly the same remainder if you divide it by 100. Okay, then uh, let's consider uh, uh, the following thing, SN minus SM. Well, if two numbers give the same remainder, then their difference would be divisible by 100, right? So if you have, let's say, 127 and 3,527, remainder 27 in both cases, if you subtract one from another, it will be 3, 4, 0, 0, obviously. So if you subtract two numbers with this which have the same remainder, if divided by uh, 100, you will have the result, the difference would be divisible by 100. So, Let's do the following. What constitutes SN? It's all numbers from 1 to N. What constitutes SM? It's non, not all numbers from 1 to M. So let's take numbers S, sorry, N, M plus 1, N, M plus 2, etc., N, N. What are these numbers? Well, this is exactly what constitutes this sum, because Sn is from the first to Ns, Sm is from the first to Nms, so if I will subtract them, then this group represents this particular sum. So this is exactly the group of numbers. If I can choose these numbers, some of them would be actually the difference between these Sn and this M, and obviously divisible by 100. That's the end of it. So again, what I'm suggesting you um, go to the website unizor.com to the course Math Plus and uh, Problems, go to arithmetic part of it, and it's arithmetic 05. So read the problems, read the hints, and try to recreate all the solutions yourself. That would be very, very helpful for you. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.